Devontae Adams just joined me in the Raiders alumni group here. I think this trade may end up being a win-win for both teams. As much as I, you know, and had previously said in other videos, I hope it works out with Devontae staying with us. Any team is better with 17 on the field. However, um, certain things, it's harder to have water under the bridge. I, we all knew or could kind of sense Devontae wasn't happy, and that was made clear by him requesting a trade. That's going to make things weird all season, and he clearly wanted out. He got out. We now don't have to pay him all of that money, offloaded that, and receive what I'm hearing is a third-round conditional pick, which could turn into potentially a second-round pick, depending on his performance or snap count, things of that nature. And what it tells us about the Jets is that they're all in on winning now, and they're all in on giving Aaron Rodgers whatever he wants. And the thing that he has made public, and it's been no secret, he's been recruiting Devontae for years now, that's, if he had his choice, his number one receiver in the NFL. And when I think about, okay, what will this do for the Jets? You, you go through a pros and cons list. Is this actually good? Is Devontae going to change anything? The pros well outweigh the cons. And I'll tell you why. Worst case scenario, Devontae doesn't help anything. I get everybody saying, well, he's not going to help the old line doing this or, you know, these bad balls. He's not on defense. And look, I get that. Worst case scenario, they keep on losing. Maybe they get a great placement in the first round pick next year and, you know, whatever. Okay, they keep on losing. It's kind of only upside. And with the history that Rodgers and Devontae Adams have, that telekinesis, there could be a lot of upside. You know, that could be not only kind of the thing that syncs up the offense, now People have to put more attention on Devontae. They do have a lot of talent on that, on that team. They can't double everybody. It opens up other people now. You just need to get in sync. Offense is a lot like clockwork, and I know they're both familiar with that scheme. They're familiar with each other. They've got a lot of rapport and history. So, yeah, at the end of the day, it's Rodgers is, may or may not be here next season. He may, may not be around. He may retire and then you're kind of thinking, well, why did we get Devontae, or why did the Jets get Devontae? We, you know, might as well tank and get the first, you know, best quarterback we can in the draft. And first off, tanking is, you know, it's not a real thing. You're not trying, nobody's trying to do their worst. You can't somehow sync up 53 guys on a team to just throw, it, throw in the towel so that the team does better in the draft. Like, come, get out of here. Second off, even first round picks, even from the first pick on, they're all risks. I think it's something like 50% of first round draft picks are essentially busts, meaning they bust in the sense of they don't live up to the hype. They don't become this amazing potential. Everybody sees in them and you can't lose with this pick. There's no such thing as a surefire pick. And the best you're going to get with that, and the, the only thing that makes sense if you're going to bet on a rookie being your franchise quarterback, is to try to get them in the first round at the top of it. They're all a risk, but those are the guys that have all been vetted, and it makes sense that one of those may be the guy. Anything beyond that, like, nobody can actually predict the Kittles or the Debos or the Crosbys and, you know, this fifth rounder that turns into this star. Nobody's expecting that from them in the first place. And you can't predict it because most of that is a mentality. Most of the NFL in general is mentality over the physical, you know, uh, ability and potential of physical ability. It's mostly a mentality. You can have the most talented guy in the world that runs a 4.0, but if he doesn't have it up here, he's not going to amount to much. If he doesn't believe he's going to be great, it does, you can't just get by on talent in the NFL. So Rodgers coming in there. One, they're trying to win now. They have nothing to lose. They might as well. You know, it's not like you're going to somehow be in that much better of a situation for the draft if you do or don't get him. It's either he's going to come in and elevate the team or he's not, and they'll keep losing and land where they land. You can't control those things. And I just think that it's a, you've already kind of gone all in with Rodgers anyways. You might as well give him this one last thing. And it kind of makes <laughs> It seems like, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to speculate or create rumors, 
But a lot of people have speculated that, oh, Rodgers is, is lying. He did have a lot to do with Salah getting fired and wanted, you know, hack it in there and, you know, change the, the play callers or this, that, and the other. You know, he's really wanted Devontae, and they're doing what he wants, you know, in the midst of him not playing his best game and them losing. They, they haven't given up on Rodgers. They're sure giving him what he wants, so it kind of makes you wonder, oh, I wonder if that is what he wanted with Salah getting out of there. Um, yeah, anyways, these are my thoughts. Um, no hate on Devontae. You know, I'm Raider Nation, obviously, but I played. I got a different mentality. You know, these are people. He's trying to do what's best for him. Everybody's just doing their best. I appreciate everything 17 did for us, and uh, he's now forever an alumni. Much love to him, and uh, love you all, Raider Nation.